Welcome back. This is Chemistry Central Science section 19.7, Free Energy and the Equilibrium Constant. So to look at this is terrifying, and this would be something you would just write down in a book and use it as you need to. Uh, delta G naught, or delta G with the degree sign, simply means that it's at, in standard conditions. Um, like like uh, zero uh, degrees Celsius in one atmosphere. Um, let me remind you something about your equilibrium constant, and you've done dozens of these Ks. A K is always at equilibrium. So a K is the, is the concentrations of the products divided by the concentrations of the reactants at equilibrium. Q is that at any at any temperature at any time not in equilibrium so q is at any moment that you want to pick take the concentrations of the products divide by the concentrations of the reactants at any time and that's called q if q equals k then it's at equilibrium okay that's the only time that q would equal k because it's the same numbers exactly done the same way so if q equals k right uh, and G and and uh, delta G, remember, gives free energy is zero. So let me think what that means. Gives free energy means that uh, delta H equals negative T delta S. If those two things are true, then it means that it's not spontaneous only in one direction. It's spontaneous in both directions. So imagine a glass of water at zero degrees. Ice would be melting into water at zero, and water would be freezing into ice at zero. Okay, both of them exactly the same. So here we've got an equilibrium where you also have a reversible reaction at that's it's at equilibrium and reversible. Okay, so that, that means you're going to make just as much of one as the other. Okay, that, that it's going one way as easy as it is going the other. It's not easier to go right, and it's not easier to go left. So there's your situation. All right. Now, don't worry about the algebra. You can use this formula. Uh, delta G naught just means standard conditions. So zero Celsius, uh, one atmosphere. Um, so 273 Kelvin in one atmosphere is whatever the delta G is, is delta G naught. And it will be equal to... R, which is the gas constant, times your times your K or your T, which is your Kelvin temperature, times the natural log of Q. Okay, oh, that's awful. Q, remember, is the is the concentrations of the products divided by the concentrations of the reactants. All right, so isn't this terrible? So if Q equals K, if Q equals K, then it's at equilibrium. All right, K is only at equilibrium, and if Q equals K, it means when you test it, it's at equilibrium. Then you can substitute K for Q. Since you can substitute K for Q, it's easier to find the, concentrate, the equilibrium constant K, and so you're going to see that delta G naught is equal to negative RT natural log of K. And you're going to see this, believe it or not, in two or three different places. There are very smart people in this world that can understand stuff like this. It's truly amazing to me. All right? Now, don't worry about it. This is simply just written down. You're just going to write it down. But it does make sense. Look at what it implies. Okay? Look at this. If delta G naught is less than zero, okay, that means you're making more products. Why are you making more products? Because it's spontaneous. It's, it's, it's um, likely to happen. If it's likely to happen, you're going to make products. So you're, that chemical reaction that you're considering that has a left and right side, if delta G is less than zero, then it's a spontaneous reaction. And if it's a spontaneous reaction, it's likely to happen. It just happens. If you put the two things together, it happens. All right, take these two chemicals, put it in the jar, and it, you don't even have to mix it sometimes. It just explodes. All right, that's don't put a match to the gasoline. That's a spontaneous reaction. 
So if you end up with a negative G, you're going to have a, a K bigger than 1, sometimes hugely bigger than 1. So if that's true, you're going to make lots of product. Okay. If delta G naught is equal to 0, then your K equals 1, and you're going to make exactly the same amount of product and reactant. You're going to have 50% leftover reactant, 50% product, if uh, delta G naught equals 0. Conversely, if you have a positive delta G, then it's not just, it's, it's non-spontaneous, which means it's actually spontaneous in the reverse direction. And you're going to make lot, you're going to have lots of leftover reactant and maybe no product or only the tiniest little tiny bit of product. All right. So, so first of all, this is memorized or written down at least. And then this makes good sense. That's not actually hard. Now, I like what they did in the textbook about the end because they're, they're relating it to biological systems. Your body does this all the time, all the time. So for instance, um, it takes something like sugar and it breaks sugar down and that's a spontaneous reaction and it give, gets you energy and then uses that energy to do a different chemical reaction that's not spontaneous. Okay, so let's say that your cell wants to take in some food, or let's say your cell wants to break down some food, or let's say in the case that they gave in the book, ADP is phosphorylized into ATP so that you can use it in, in, um, in your cells, everything in your cells. Every time a muscle um, contracts, it's caused by ATP. ATP was the money that paid for that contraction. Well, ADP is a is a burned out battery. ATP has lots of potential energy. ADP has none. Well, how do you turn it back into ADP? From ADP to ATP, you're going to have to recharge that battery and you have to add energy to do it. It's a non-spontaneous reaction. So what has happened? You eat. You have a spontaneous reaction of turning sugar into carbon dioxide and water. That dumps lots of energy. You take that energy, you take the ADP, you rephosphorylize it and make it ATP, and you basically have pulled the bow back and given it potential energy. You have money in your cells to spend. Okay, so the free energy is used in multi-step. These, um, these are called coupled reactions. They're coupled together. Something free to, to pay for something not free. As long as you take it in, okay, now your cells are not going to go out and make sugar because you're not a, a plant, but if you eat a candy bar and give it that sugar, well, that's a free, that's a spontaneous reaction that gains lots of energy that's then turned around and reinvested in non-spontaneous reactions, okay? So for as hard as this section is, I really like this section, 19.7.